Hi everyone, we're back with another video today focused on another unpopular yet really crucial concept in Wild Rift, which is called wave management. So as you know, minions start spawning from each team's nexus uh, on all three lanes, Baron, Mid and Dragon Lane. And to win the game, being able to use those waves is just as important as using your champion, knowing what the enemy champions do, using tempo. Got a video on that by the way, don't forget. Um, so yeah, if you just want to know more about wave management, like okay, what is slow pushing exactly, what is freezing, when should I use those things? Or if you're just looking for more information and tips on how to use them effectively, you're at the right place. So what can you do with your waves exactly? In Wild Drift, you've got three options. They're all three very different. They've got their own advantages and their own requirements. There's no perfect solution. You really got to find which one you got to use at what time. Um, so let's go over those one by one. First of all, you've got pushing wave. So what is pushing wave exactly? It means you're gonna kill the enemy minions faster than the opponent kills yours. If you kill them faster, your waves can be bigger and move forward up to a point where it will crash. What is crashing? It means your minions are gonna be in fire range of the enemy turret. So the enemy turret is gonna fire your minions, basically. Um, when do you use that? It's when you want to be aggressive, when you can be aggressive, you, like you can't just want to be aggressive if you've got a weak early game champion, for example. Um, but you also want to be proactive on the rest of the map. So it's not very useful, let's say, on your lane, like you're not going to take a kill or whatever by pushing away, or at least it's not the perfect strategy to do so. But uh, you're going to be able to buy some time to do stuff around. So it basically benefits your whole team. Let's see it like that. Um, let's watch a clip where we can see the five big advantages of pushing the wave. So we see here, of course, Rubix GG gameplay. I'm biased, I know, but whatever, as long as it shows what I want to show, it's, it's good. Um, we see Snitch on the mid lane playing Gragas versus Blows as they're playing uh, Akali. Um, Kragas is most of the time going to have prio over Akali. Akali isn't really strong in early game, she needs her abilities, she needs cooldown, ability haste. Um, while Gragas is pretty strong in early and strong all around. The first advantage we can see right at the start is that Snitch has more levels than uh, Esther. So there's a level advantage when you're pushing away. Why? Because as I said, you're killing the enemy minions faster than your opponent does. If you kill minions faster, you've killed more minions at the same time, so you've got more level. It's basic knowledge, so yeah, you're gonna have more levels, which means you're gonna have more HP, more abilities in early game. Right now, Snitch can use 3 abilities, while Akali only has 2. Um, doesn't matter if 7 is here, he's still Snitch is gonna still gonna be the more aggressive one, because he's strong in early game, but 7 being here just helps uh, pushing the wave faster. That's it, just so you know. Um, so as we said, first advantage is level advantage. Second one is it enables to put your enemy under pressure, under turret. Why? If you're pushing, as I said, at one point you're going to crash the wave if you're pushing it, push it enough. Uh, if you're crashing, the enemy turret is going to fire and it's going to be more difficult for Akali to farm and to last hit minutes. Is it impossible? Definitely not. Like, Akali could definitely still a uh, perfect CS and last hit everything. It's just a bit more difficult, she might have to use an ability or two, etc. So it puts pressure on her, she has more pressure to succeed in everything. And she has less abilities available, maybe if champions who have mana issues, they will have to need abilities, well, they will have less mana to fight or other things. So yeah, it puts basically just an additional pressure, it's not much, but it's an advantage. Third thing is if Akali is on the turret, she's gonna have minions to farm and she can't really move uh, from her lane. Otherwise, if she moves, the turret is gonna hit the minions and she loses the minions, which is not what you want as a mid laner or any lane, basically. Um, so Snitch and Seven basically buy a window of 10-15 seconds where they know they can do whatever they want, while they know Akali is gonna be under turret or she loses a lot. So let's say they could go on the bot jungle and put some deep vision. They could go take a jungle camp. Well, guess what? Seven is here. He helps taking the prior. Akali is locked in. He's gonna go take the blue buff. 
it's a very normal step. You can do that in solo queue too, it's not difficult to implement. He's helping taking prior, Akali's locked, Snitch can move if they have issues here. Luckily they also have prior and bot lane with Oriana over Varus, which is quite strange, I'm gonna lie. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, they can do whatever they want right now and steal some camps from the enemy team. We see Pantheon can't do that, because if Pantheon tries to go on, go on the blue buff, Darius is a strong uh, champion who can still deny some farm and doesn't really care. Uh, Gragas is going to be able to rotate very fast where Akali doesn't. So yeah, Pantheon is locked, can't go for the enemy blue buff, but we can. So we take something away from the enemy team. Um, two other advantages <clears throat> of pushing like that. Let me go back a bit. Two advantages that are not in this clip, but let's say Akali is low life. So let's say she fought with Gragas a bit early game and Gragas had some good trades. If Akali is low, she's gonna have even more pressure. Why? Because if she tries to last hit, especially as a short range champion, Snatch and Seven could just decide to dive her. She would maybe have to back, but if she backs, again, she loses her CS, her minions, because the turret is just gonna kill them. So she has an additional choice she has to make of, okay, do I take the risk of fighting for my minions or do I just back and lose CS and concede? Now the opposite is true too. If Snitch uh, pushes the wave, Akali has to stay there or back, whatever. But Snitch himself can decide to back. He has, as we said before, a 10 or 15 second window where he can back if he wants to. He can do whatever he wants, basically. So if he wants to back, he can cash in the bit of gold he has. He must not have that much, but still it's a bit of, a bit of cash. Uh, he can get some mana back, he can get his health 100% if he lost a bit. And this will mean he will be stronger than Akali when he comes back. Why? Because Akali doesn't have the time to push her wave again back to Snitch's turret by the time he backs. There's no way, especially in early, wave didn't come yet, etc. So Snitch can have a free back while Akali if she clears this wave, and if she backs again, Snitch will have the time by the time the next wave arrives to just push it in the turret again. So she's gonna lose yes no matter what, unless she takes risks. Uh, so yeah, Snitch buys tempo, by having prior and by pushing the wave, to do what he wants, to enable his jungle and his support to do stuff, etc. It's a really, really good move, pushing a wave. And as we said, he doesn't accomplish much on his lane, so he's being aggressive on the whole map. Now, there's the defensive option. It's called freezing. What is freezing exactly? Let's take a clip already here for that. Up. So, first, what is freezing? Freezing means uh, you're gonna let the wave push towards you. So, it's basically you let the enemy push, but you avoid one big thing it's crashing. You can't let the enemy wave crash under your turrets. You always want the wave of your enemy outside of your turret's fire range. How do you do that? Well, you try to only last hit, last hit minions to get the gold and the experience, but you don't push it that much. You don't hit it two, three, four times and just make it out. You just last hit, stop, last hit, stop. If your enemy also only last hits, you might have to concede one or two minions if needed, if you really want to freeze. What are the two advantages of freezing? Well. We'll see it right here. So Snitch is getting ganked. We see in a difficult, he's in a difficult spot. He has to use a couple abilities. We see Yasuo's already level 5, he's 4. We see Fizz is level 6, thanks to your, your Olaf right there. Um, what can he do? He realizes he's in a tough spot. He could just go in this bush and come back at him if he just wants to push. And he sees his wave is coming too. So what does he do? He's gonna tank one cannon shot, so the cannon stays right there. Outside of turret range still. And his wave stays right there. First advantage is pretty obvious. He's going to be way closer to his turret to farm. If the waves were meeting somewhere here, he would have to be here to farm. And it's way more risky uh, for ganks from Fizz, etc. While here is really close to his turret, he has his ranged form to farm if needed. He's going to be safer. Um, the second option might be even easier to show with Akali gameplay right there. Akali, if she were able to freeze, she didn't hear or she couldn't, but if she was able to freeze, one, she's safer again from Kha'Zix, from Gragas, but someone like Pantheon could gank her too. 
let's say the wave stayed right there out of turret range. Bantian could come through here, could come through the bushes, he could come from behind, he could go to his jungle and come back. Like it's way easier to gank someone when he's close to your tower than his. That's normal. So that's the two advantages of freezing. One, you're safer. And two, if you've got a strong jungler, it's better for ganks. Now it's not easy to freeze. So as we see right there, Snitch had to really calculate where the where the cannon is, is stopping. Um, he has to take in consideration like vision. Enemies really don't like to be frozen upon. I guess that's how we say it. Um, so they might come to break the freeze. So breaking the freeze means you're just gonna last it. You're gonna hit and push the wave against until it crashes. And Snitch can't really stand that. Um, but yeah, it's not easy. You gotta know your turret's range. You gotta know. Okay, he will go this fast, etc. Like, it's gonna need a bit of practice, uh, but it's a really effective tool if you want to be a bit more defensive. Now, it also has disadvantages. The disadvantages are that right now, Yasuo and Fizz can do whatever they want. The new snitch is locked, they basically enable their advantage of pushing the wave. Like, if you're freezing, it means the enemy has pushed the wave, so they have the advantage of pushing the waves that we saw a minute ago, um, which is having prio. Which is they can back if they want, etc. Um, you always gotta consider, okay, my champion right now, what does it need? Do I need to be defensive? Do I need to be aggressive? Um, can I let Yasuo and Fizz uh, go wherever and just take prio and maybe annoy my teammates? Can I nice easy to dive? Mm, might not be worth it. So Snitch right now is gonna clear and I don't know if you see it, yeah, he's gonna decide right there when he sees A. He's gonna decide to jump in and just clear the wave instantly, so Yasuo is gonna be forced to come back right after. Um, now, as we said, there's a third option. We had playing aggressively around the map by pushing a wave. We had playing defensively. Defensively is basically staying under your tower. Um, but there's also a way to be aggressive uh, in your own lane. We will see that right now with some uh, Ash gameplay. Ash here is uh, Rix Doom, so our, our ADC. Um, again, biased, whatever. Um, so we see they're gonna lane against Lulu and Vayne. Ash Chana is good in lane phase, maybe not that good after. Lulu and Vayne if not that good of a laning phase, but they're monsters in late game. So you have to put them behind, otherwise you're gonna be screwed. Especially we see Annie, we see Jarvan. There's a whole team around them with supportive picks, you can CC, etc. So yeah, you really want them to be behind. Doom recognizes that, and they start to trade. I'm not sure Lulu and Vayne should be trading this early, but whatever. What is uh, Ash gonna do? Only last hit. So, what is that gonna do? If you only last hit minions, but still push more than the enemies, you're gonna stack up waves and waves and waves and waves. We see already the wave getting bigger and bigger, while here there will only be 4 minions left soon, you've got 4 ranged and 2 melee ones, so it's really bigger than the opponents. Plus, if you're really good in early game and trade it well, you can just decide to zone those two out. If they're zoned out, they're gonna lose minions, which means gold and XP. So you're building, just like when you're pushing the wave, an XP advantage, a level advantage. Also a health advantage because you can trade, especially with ranged champions, and you see the wave is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Now let's move on a little bit. We see they're still trading. They're soon gonna be level 3, they're only level 2 and Lulu is only level 1 even, not even close to level 2. And the wave is again getting bigger and you see right now, it was a cannon wave we just crashed. We just crashed. A cannon wave right there is perfect for a slow push. Why? Because it has a lot of HP, a lot of damage, so you can push it under turrets and buy not only 10 or 15 seconds, maybe 20 or 25. But you have another option, which is diving under turrets. So you're crashing the wave, and if you say, okay, right there, I'm feeling so good, I'm not even go gonna go away and put a vision, take a jungle camp, whatever, I'm gonna be killing them. You have to trade really well, it's dangerous. Usually you want to do that with your juggler, Fizz is bot lane, but here they're feeling good enough to, to be able to do it. Um, Lulu just got level 2. They're gonna be trading, and they can, because the minions are hitting Lulu. Half of the damage that Lulu just take, took um, comes from minions. 
that's a really big difference. We see the cannon hitting, we see the turret is going to get slower and slower. Um, so yeah, it's an easy kill. They get minions again, they get another level advantage, and they get a turret plate. It's a perfect operation, and they're basically getting 500 at least gold uh, advance on the vein. Uh, so she's delayed on being a monster in late game. Yeah, she's not going to be a monster anytime soon. And Ash can have more gold, do more damage, etc. So yeah, it's the, the perfect operation you want in a lane where you have to dominate. Alright, so now that we've seen how wave management works in Wild Rift, what you can do, whether it's pushing a wave, freezing it, or slow pushing it, what the objectives are with each, uh, which tools you really need to implement those, when it's the best timing and stuff to do it. Um, here is a last practical advice. Uh, I don't think I've seen it anywhere else yet in Wild Rift at least. Um, it's a special analysis of wave timers, when they spawn, when they crash in the middle of the map, and therefore what you can do exactly at the right timers to play around, for example, the objectives at 4 minutes, or how to manage a wave in the side lane in later stages. So let me get, let me get you the timers real quick. There you go. Alright, so those are the timers for the mid lane. If you're a side laner or if you want to play around the side lane, you gotta add seven more seconds to those. It's gonna be at 23 seconds, 48, etc. Okay. Um, I'll just speak about mid lane timers, but yeah, so you know. So there are four different, or five at least, uh, different stages uh, with wave management. First of all, there's minute zero to four. You see, there's a wave every 25 seconds, constantly, just crash at the same time. And one wave out of three has a cannon. This means that at the 106 wave or at the 221 wave, you could potentially schedule uh, something like a slow push because your cannon is going to take way more time to be cleared. So you win a wider window of, uh, of time to do whatever who the hell you want, whether it's putting vision or anything, basically. Um, those are really good timers to also crash just a small pushing wave if you want to back or stuff like that, if you want to take the turret plate if you're really ahead. Something like that you can schedule. Now it changes at 4 minutes. What changes? First of all, you'll get a wave every 30 seconds. So the waves are going to be slower, even though the game intensifies. It's a bit weird, I know. But you get a cannon every 2 waves now. That's a big difference, because it helps you though. Uh, push a tower, be more aggressive, whether it's mid or on the side lane. You've got basically just more opportunities to be aggressive on your map and make plays whether it's slow push, freezing, etc, etc. Because freezing works too, obviously. If an enemy loses a cannon, it's gonna cost him way more gold than not losing a cannon, just a ranged minion, okay? Um, so, first practical tip. There's gonna be a cannon at 3.11 and 4.1. What I advise you to do, as a mid laner especially, is to clear the 3.36 wave. Normally, without a cannon, it should be really easy. Let's say, like, especially for, I don't know, Ari or Garen mid, who knows? You're going to clear that very fast. You'll be able to back at what? 340, maybe? Something like that. You start backing. You can cash in around 350, let's say, and you're back in lane for 4 minutes. Which means that you can take the priority of a cannon wave if you clear this one very fast too. You'll buy a 10 or 15 second window uh, to do whatever you want, as we said, if you clear especially a cannon wave, but it's a very important window. Why? At 401, you're gonna have plenty of stuff to do. You can put vision on an objective, you can start an objective, let's say you have Kha'Zix or stuff like that, that really does an objective fast. Um, Basically, having the priority at that time is really worth and it impacts plenty of games recently. So let's say, let's just take a wild drift map quickly. Up. Uh, let's say this one, it's a nice one. Okay, let's say... There we go. Okay, let's say we're on this map. If you clear this wave, if you have the prior to do to put a vision here, to pop the vision plant, maybe. Um, anything, it's gonna be worse a lot because knowing where the enemy jungle is, if you see him on red, because uh, junglers often take the red right before uh, uh, Drake or Harold spawn, whatever, 
you're gonna have crucial info that's gonna influence your capacity, your ability, I mean, to know where you gotta go, if you go for objective, if you go for top turret maybe, if you have a Fiora on your team, whatever, you, you really enable plenty of options to be open for your side. So this one is really important, playing the prior right there is worth it. That's like the timer you want to impact. Okay, I take this wave, I back here, I'm back for this wave on cannon, and I take the priority. Now the next change is right after. So as I said, the waves are going to be slower, 30 seconds, one cannon every two waves. Try to play around those cannons to dive into it. Like if you've got a, if you see a wave crashing without a cannon, maybe don't ask your juggle to be there right then. Tell him before, okay, right now I don't have a cannon wave. Try to maybe do one more jungle camp. You can come right after and we'll dive on a cannon wave. You've got way higher odds to do stuff. Of course, if the window is perfect to dive, go ahead. You don't need a cannon. It's just an additional factor that could help if you don't need it or if the window is too good to not be taken, go ahead for it. Okay. Um, next change is at 10 minutes and 26 seconds. We go back at one wave every 25 seconds. So Wild Rift Devs basically said, okay, 10 minutes, let's go faster again. Why not? Now, the next big thing, and there I insist, at 12 minutes, you have to consider uh, the states of your silence. There is no way you can just focus in five min mid lane after 12 minutes. Why? Because there are still waves every 25 seconds, but waves have now two cannons. If you tend to forget during even just 45 seconds or 50 seconds by the time two waves are here, um, two waves like those, your side lane is crushed for the next minute at least. Why? Because you'll have four cannons uh, pushing here, or even five. So if you have five cannons pushing then, it's going to be one hell of a mess to debush after. That's why split pushers are so effective right now, and you have to consider them. Even like just send a Gragas or a Garmin side lane, whatever, it's perfect because he's gonna be able to clear it very fast. But if you let Fiora or Kami maybe slow push or freeze you a little bit on the side lane so she can stack two, three, four, five, six cannons, it's gonna be impossible to manage afterwards. Or what she can do then, and that's why speed pushers also are really effective. Let's say those are plenty of cannons, those two turrets are down. If she stacks a lot of cannons and they're gonna push here and they're gonna be crashing here, she starts moving for a drake that's gonna be spawning. If you coordinate those timers, you slow push this one, you start rotating, the enemy has to choose. Okay, do I send my five people here for the cloud drake, who's the best drake in the universe, by the way, uh, to contest the 5v5? But then I lose my T2 and we might lose drake, like drake is a 50 50 fight, let's say. And we definitely lose turret because there are 10,000 cannons pushing at our doors. Or do we send someone here? We don't lose a turret, but we flip a 4v5 at Cloudwick, who's busted. Ah, it's a difficult situation. So forgetting your side lanes is really not the way to go. You gotta always, at least 30 or 45 seconds, even before an objective spawn, be able to say, okay, are my side lanes good? Am I in danger for the next minute? Because an objective, even if it spawns in 45 seconds, nothing says that all five people will be here. Maybe they're just waiting, they're gonna be playing the side lanes 15 seconds later, and you still have the choice to be, to make. So yeah, be aware of that, of your side lanes, because they are really, really important. Um, the next change is at 18 minutes, when the waves don't change, still two cannons, one cannons, two cannons, um, but it's every 20 seconds. So basically at 18 minutes, the game starts really ramping up, um, side lanes are going to be pushing heavily you will need to send people on side lanes there will be more catch opportunities etc so yeah just be aware of that but really starting 12 minutes if you already forget then ah, it's going to be tough so pay attention to it and yeah if you want to take advantage early don't forget this special timer just to summarize again so at 336 i clear the wave instantly i back in a safe place if you get cancelled you just lose time um, so back safely, you get back by 4 minutes on lane, you clear the cannon and you have a 15 second prior where you can do whatever you want. This is game breaking. So yeah, this is uh, this is gonna be it for this uh, wave management video. 
Um, I hope you're liking it. Uh, feel free to send feedback as always, whether the comments or DMs. I got plenty of DMs and then comments about my last videos and I, I really love it. So thank you all. Uh, feel free to like, subscribe, whatever. I'm not going to be the average YouTuber here. Um, you do whatever the hell you want. And yeah, see you next time for another video. Bye bye.